first off, I just want to say, how are you doing? I'm doing good. This is the biggest headline show I've played. So. I know. Yeah, you did one a few months ago, too, and that one sold out, too, right? Yes, it did. Yeah, this one sold out in a day, which is really crazy. I know. Trust me. I know. It's hard was, to get tickets. It's hard to get tickets. Yeah. yeah. You're high in demand these days. It's you know? kind of crazy. and It's a little weird. But, um, yeah, I love this venue. It feels like like a dive bar cowboy theme. Yeah. So I, it suits it's you perfect. pretty well. Yeah, and obviously tonight's the Pink Pony Club themed. Mm -hmm. I try to do a different theme for each show. Like New York is on Friday, and it's my Kink is Karma themed, which is another one of my songs. So it's a lot more like kinky and, and like red and clown. It's just really fun. So wait, are you going to dress as like a clown on Friday? or? I kind of. I have like, I'm going to be in like a little bit of drag. Um, like kind of like the music video, but uh, I have like a corset that I made um, and it's like red and poofy kind of clown-like. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, you've been making clothes since like you were younger, right? I made clothes in high school, like actually made my dresses from like scratch, but uh, I like haven't done that in a long time. So what I do now is like find a piece and then like add to it and like embellish it with um, rhinestones and so on. Just jewels, just all of that. I love doing it so much. I, I could tell, you know, I see your aesthetic, you know, I it's see it. supposed to be very like, like everything I do with my project is very much what would my eight year old self love. And that's just tacky brats doll. Like it's supposed to look tacky. Like I, I always wear costume jewelry and I literally think it's prettier than like fine jewelry. And so that's why I wear it. I would it, agree. You know? <laughs> All right. Well, speaking about you know your aesthetic and everything, I actually saw you back in 2018 when you were opening for Declan. Oh, like when you were in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was crazy. That was show on the tour. I'm glad you saw that one. I know. I'm That's glad great. I saw that too. It was great. But you know, I did notice there was like a slight change in aesthetic from then to now. Oh yeah. But I want to know too because I think it was funny because you know I, I saw you live there, but I'm like, oh, like she's cool. But I didn't yeah. hear your music again until you dropped Pink Pony Pink Club. Pony. I hadn't and, released anything for yeah. like two years straight. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. But and I think I found that song on my Discover Weekly like last year in February. Whoa, cool. Yeah. Okay. And I think your birthday's in February, right? Do you think yeah. that was a sign? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I released Pink Pony Club in 2020. Unfortunately, like the week of the pandemic hit. So it was just just really unfortunate i mean nonetheless it was still a banger you know it reached a lot of people <laughs> I, thank you i just feel like this is just like such proof that like doing this show is just like such proof that it was always meant to be party like it is like we're in west hollywood right now yeah and this is west literally hollywood's song, yeah. anthem yeah. like yeah. santa monica like we're literally on set i used to live down the street oh really and so oh. that's what like inspired yeah literally Makes sense. Okay, but let's talk about the new song, the one that you dropped last week, Feminomenon. Feminomenon. Oh, fe sorry. Feminom <laughs> You, If you think about it, it's like, it's like two words, like feminine. Yeah. Feminine yeah. is the first. Uh -huh. And then nominon. Feminine nominon. Feminine nominon. There you go. Okay. And so I want to know, because I think, you know, listening online, hearing all the reactions and everything, myself and everyone, they love the song. <laughs> it's great and dancey, catchy. But there's one lyric everyone's talking about, and I think you know. It's like, the you know, pajama. yeah, keep out like Papa John. <laughs> and so I want to know, why did you put down the song? Well, I literally thought it was a joke. Like, I wrote it with Dan Nigro, who, who also produced it, and did, yeah. like, Pink Pony and, like, My King is Karma. Like, we did, we do pretty much, like, my whole project. But, um, I, like, we were looking up what rhymed with feminine nominon. Like, and we were just, we were on rhymes, and it was, like, Papa John. And I was, like, I was, like, ha, ha, la, and... It was like serious. And then he was like, we should name it Papa John. I was like, no, no. like we have to name a feminine nominon. And he's like, but it's funny. And I was like, no, it's not. Like, anyway, it is funny, but not for a title. No. no. But still. You yeah. think you would get sponsored though? Like maybe a chaperoni, pepperoni pizza or something, you know? Fuck Papa John. Add a, add a drum, <laughs> drum beat right there. But like, look, he fucked Papa John like yeah. himself. Oh yeah, no. But their pizza. Do you like it? I haven't had it like like since like like high school. Like my best friend worked at Papa John's. Uh, okay. So like that was fire. But like, fuck the actual Papa John. I agree. I agree. 
But let's talk about another thing in the song too, because you know you do that. So you do this like call and response like halfway through the songs, like you know, ladies, and it, you know it reminds me of like you know, Outcast, Hey Y'all. Oh, yeah. But also, I don't know if this was an influence too. There's like that song from Drive, you know, Desire Under Your Spell. It sounds similar to that too. What is? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, it's okay. But what, yeah, was that was that song in Hey Y'all? Was that, was that like inspiration for that part, or no, I what inspired didn't even that? Think about that. I, that's so cool, though. But I know that I think about it. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what inspired it. I was like, well, because bridges are always like, how can I be psychotic? You know, like, in what way? So I was like, it would be so fun to be like, it was just kind of like automatic to be like, I feel like we should like yell and like do like a speech or something. And so we just did call and response because I was like, oh, that would be so fun for the show. You know. Yeah, I, that's what I love about some of your songs because they're so unique. You know, Naked Manhattan, this song is like, you know, in Naked Manhattan is like, oh, like, touch me, touch me, touch me. Yeah. And then this song's like, dude, play a song with a fucking beat. Yeah. It's great. Thanks. It really keeps you on your toes, you know, makes it stand out. <laughs> I know some people are really thrown off when they first hear it. They're like, what the fuck? But I think after a few times, it's like, oh, this is actually fun. Yeah. You know? Definitely. So, and you yeah. talked about Dan earlier too. I was wondering, how did you two meet up? How do you guys start writing songs together? Well, originally we had, we have the same management company, but um, we just like met one day and I like immediately was like, I like this person. We have a very like, we butt heads a lot because we, we just, he just always pushes me and I feel like that's like the best, but um, I just like immediately connected with him and we've been working for four years. So, that's yeah. crazy. And let's talk about this too. I heard that you know you wanted to be a musician because I think you were watching the Grammys when you're younger. Don't but say that. I was on your TikTok live last week. Please. You know, I, if I want a Grammy, I'm not showing up. And so tell me. What, I know I say that all the time. Come fuck the Grammys. <laughs> Why though? Wait, that's a fucking talent show for rich people. I agree. And I hope they hear this. <laughs> No, my mom, like, look, I would have to, like, go to the Grammys, like, because my grandfather, Chapel, who I named myself after, would mm -hmm. be very upset with me if I didn't, like, do that, you know? Yeah. So I think I would go, but it would be, like, I would do some sort of protest in, like, an outfit or, like, something. Literally I would do, says, fuck the I would do, yeah, I would be, like, fuck the Grammys. This is a joke. And then I'd walk off stage. <laughs> That's great. And you know, you've been doing music for quite a while now, obviously. But I was wondering, like, who were some artists that inspired you? What inspired your music? Oh, Alanis Morissette, who I'm covering tonight. I'm doing You Oughta Know, That's which great. I've always dreamed of doing mm -hmm. that. Um, Kate Bush. Yeah. Um, I love Cindy Lauper a lot. So good. But Gaga. Uh -huh. yeah. I was a huge. My first like EP, School Nights, was very inspired by Lord because she was brand new whenever I was when I was writing that in high school and like also Lana obviously but um like Prince just just like really anthemic artists yeah. you know I just love like writing anthems but obviously I have some ballads but they're just yeah you know whatever right quick side note did you see Lord when she was on tour I saw her at the um the his solar power tour Yes. Yeah, the one, the, the recent one, yeah. Yeah, with, with Remy Wolf opened. Oh, I, the one Are in LA? There? I was at yeah, that show the too. Shine. Dude, it was so good. So oh my. good. The f oh, I almost God. cried when she played Ribs. I'm like, oh my Dude, God. Dude, I was crying during Ribs. It's amazing. Ugh. But, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but, you know, it might be a little bit different for you. But for me, I feel like, you know, as an adult, it's kind of hard to make friends, you know? But I was wondering, you know, I feel like you have a great vibe. I'm wondering if we could be friends, you know? Yes. Thank yes, you, I thank you. Friends. Yeah, uh, let's be friends. And as a thing I like to do for my friends is I like to give them gifts. So I have some gifts for you. The backpack? Yeah, no, it's not, not the whole backpack, but there's some gifts. And let's see, you talked about this artist actually. Wow, what a coincidence. It's Please. actually Kate Bush. <gasps> oh my God. It's a mini LP, pretty what? cool. What? Dude, she looks fucking psycho. <laughs> I picked that one because I don't give a fuck. She like doesn't. she looks crazy all the time, dude. I love this. I Thank picked that you. one because I'm like, you know, that feels like it would. Fit yeah, I, absolutely. She's probably like vocally who in Annie Lennox, like Pink Pony Club. We, we were like, we have to do, 
something like super like how Kate would do. Yeah. You know? Oh, this is so cool. Oh, well, cool. Babushka <laughs> slays. Yeah, bitch. Oh, I love this. Thank you. But that, that's not all. You know, you're kind of a big deal. Sold out show. I try to get on a guest list. They're like, we have so many people who got to kick people off, Please. you know? So I have more gifts for you. What? And you mentioned what? the singer too. One oh. more set. Oh, Dragon Little oh, Pill. Man, that's so awesome. Yeah. This is like one of the best albums it's of so all good. time. It's so good. I know. She, she was like 21 when she did this. Isn't that insane? Like for crazy. someone to, oh God, I love her so much. I saw her in concert at the at the Greek, I think, no, the Hollywood Bowl a couple summers ago, maybe last summer. And it was just like, I was just bawling because I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I get to see, like she hasn't played since like the fucking nineties. Yeah. Like, this is so kind of you. Welcome. Thank but you. I actually have one last Please. gift for you. I didn't give you any. And you said this song played a big influence in you becoming a songwriter. <laughs> Trying to get you the album. <laughs> It's oh, Rihanna. this is one of my favorite albums too. Stay by Rihanna. Yeah, Stay by exactly. Rihanna is. Ah, I love this, dude. The fact that she has a, the fact that she has a song on here with Chris Brown is so crazy. It is crazy. Ah, uh, Diamonds is one of my Diamonds is one of my top ten pop songs of all time. I never, Dang. ever, ever have gotten tired listening to that, ever. This well, is incredible. You have Thank you. This You're is welcome. so fire. Thank you so You're much. Hopefully. Oh, I love her. I added a few brownie points to our friendship. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And, you know, you know, we met for the first time, but I felt like I've known you for a while. So I have a little <laughs> bit, a few more questions to ask you. Yeah, please. Let's get a little bit more personal here. First question, now that we're formally friends, I have to know, is it true that you have beef with Charlie Poof? <laughs> No, okay, here's what happened. This is, uh, here's what happened. When I was 17, <laughs> I was at a party and he, sorry, my eyelashes are in my no eye. No worries. Um, he literally, <laughs> he was probably so fucking drunk and so I can't even, also I was a teenager and yeah. like got my feelings hurt all the time, but he literally, <laughs> Cut me off in the middle of a conversation. Great. And I was like, you can't do that. And then from like since then since that, I'm like, what the fuck? Cause which is fine. Like it's fucking fine. Like that he did that. Who cares? Maybe he didn't see me. But he's just the best person to make fun of. And he's a fan of mine. <laughs> you think he's gonna be at the show? No. Okay, my next question the for Charlie you. Dude. I don't is, have beef with him. He's just annoying. <laughs> I want to know, is it true back in the day you were a speech and debate god? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was. I was really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. My, my, uh, my, the event was storytelling, which is like, where you sit in a chair. I don't know if you ever did speech and debate. I did, but, but I didn't do Do you know what storytelling? What no, did you do? No, I didn't do that. What I can't event? remember specifically. I just remember I was Was it debate it. or speech? Like, were you like- It was debate, not speech. Were Whoa. you speech? I was speech, oh, dude. I was debate, oh, fuck okay. that. I was not debate. I was like, no, 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 no. But it's like where you sit here, like in a chair and you can't get out of the chair. It has to be eight minutes and you memorize like a child's story and it's like you perform it for three old people and act like they're children. It's fucking psycho. But I won. I feel, you know, I had a feeling you were good at storytelling, you know, obviously. I like got kicked out of theater, so I had to do speech and debate. <laughs> I majored in marketing, and you know, we had to do a bunch of presentations, and I have a presentation for you, actually. Are you ready? You put so much work. I did. And so, you know, since you're a singer-songwriter, I thought i do one about singer-songwriting. Okay, cool. Yeah, and tell so, me about it. Stop! <laughs> So I think the skills you Wait, need are confidence, I can't, I can't, drive, I can't, passion. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I hate myself for doing that. I hate myself for doing that. No! Okay, because I got signed in high school and I was like, they were like, sorry. <laughs> Wait, can I see that? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. <laughs> Not the Prezi. Yeah, you got a few. Oh, there. no! Please, if I put Coldplay on there, I'm going to. K-word myself. Oh, so you got Adele. Do you put Coldplay in here? 
<laughs> no. I remember doing <laughs> I remember it was for DECA, which is like a business. I don't even know. I was bad at it. But I had to. They were like, do your dream job. Like, present what your dream job would do. And I was like, I'm signed. I already have my dream job. So I'm going to do a presentation on my life. And then it wasn't. I was such a bitch. That's so annoying. I can't believe. Wait, how did you? Ah, this is look up Kaylee. No, 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 no. Who I did you talk to? Huh? Dude, we're you, friends. I feel like, you know, I had to know this stuff, you know. Who did you talk to? My mom? No, she doesn't even know about the Prezi. No, you probably looked that up on. You could Google Keely Amstead. I can't reveal my sources. You, you know, you're, Bro, how is you're a storyteller. Still... You imagine how I found it, you know? Oh my God. All right. Okay. My second to last question for you is You think singing the Christmas song at your middle school talent show had a major impact early on in your career? Yeah, I mean, that's common knowledge. I say that in. Yeah. That's common. Oh, they were going to pull something crazier no, no, no. out. Um, yeah, the Prezi was definitely the craziest thing. Um, that's kind of what kickstarted it all, to be honest. The, the, <laughs> the, the, that was the first time I sang in front of people ever. And from that day on, from the Christmas song talent show at Willard Middle School, 2011, 2010, I don't know. I was known as a singing girl, the girl that sings. I mean, and I'm still a lot. Looks like, yeah, you still have that label. Yeah, but I don't want to do this better job now. forever. For well, I don't want to do this job forever. Yeah. I want to be an art therapist one day. Oh, really? I feel like this job is like, so I can pay for college. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then my last question for you is one that a fan told me to ask you. Please. And so this fan said, who is the funniest person who has ever blocked you on Instagram? And this is by Ella J. Please, Dove Cameron. <laughs> Don't cut that. Cut that. Fuck yeah. Ella. Dove Cameron did. <laughs> Why though? She unblocked me. Okay. So I guess I mean, we're friends now. Yeah. I've never met her. That's I don't know crazy. what happened. Wow. Didn't expect that. Wow. All right. Well, thanks for taking time to do the interview. It's been fun. <laughs> Thank you. But you know, this interview is all about you. So how we're going to close off the interview, the cameraman's going to point the camera at you. You could plug anything you want, you know, the latest song you just dropped or anything else, you know, your social media. Yeah. The rest of the time's all you. OK. I'm Chapel Roan, and I just came out with a song called Feminine Ominon. And it's about how men can't make me come. And also, I'm going on Fletcher. I'm going on tour with Fletcher yes. in the fall. In like November, so I think tour tickets are for sale, but come see me. Anyway, thank you for this. I appreciate it.